All right, let's put a market maker model into a four hour power of three. This is a really beautiful setup and this is what I like personally. Um, so I guess first I'm gonna have to explain to you what power of three is. And if you don't know what power of three is, there is a bunch of videos on it all over the place. Um, a lot of people confuse and intermingle um, accumulation, manipulation, distribution with power of three with open, high, low, close. They're all pretty similar. Um, the biggest difference is when you're talking about open, high, low, close or open, low, high, close. That is specifically talking about a candle's development, which is all based around time. The candle opens at a certain time, closes at a certain time, whereas accumulation, manipulation, distribution isn't limited to that single candle's development, right? You can have a whole session accumulation, manipulation, distribution, and so on. So what we're using, what we're looking at for this is specifically the four hour, and I have it here with a nice indicator. Um, I was going to show you guys. ICT high time frame candles by Fadi. <clears throat> you can set up a bunch of different settings and stuff. But anyways, uh, we're looking at just the four hour candle development. This happens at either two o'clock. Well, what I look at is the two, the 10 a.m. or the 2 p.m. candle. You can watch the 6 a.m. candle before the 10 a.m. candle opens. You can watch the 6 a.m. candle to try to get an idea of um, maybe how the New York morning session is going to go. But I just look at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So here's a 2 p.m. setup. And so what power of three in terms of candle development really looks like is you're going to have can the can the candle's going to open right and it it's it's not necessarily going to be a straight line it might be consolidation but okay so you're going to have the candle open it's going to accumulate then you're going to have some manipulation into something and then you're going to have distribution or expansion rather. Um, and then you're gonna accumulate some more and close below the high. So this is where it's like, you can have accumulation, manipulation, distribution, kind of anywhere. But when we're talking about the specific candle development, I like to just refer to that as power of three or open high, low, close, open low, high, close. So the key to understanding where the four hour candle is going to go and how it's going to develop into a market maker model is, uh, it, well, hey, let me go through my bullet point list here. We'll start with that so I don't get sidetracked. So looking at the 6 a.m., 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. four hour candle openings. I just mentioned that. You watch for manipulation into a higher time frame PD array. That's how you know that that portion of the candle development is manipulation because it's going to manipulate somewhere. It's got to manipulate somewhere. It's not just going to turn around in the middle of nowhere. There's always a reason. Uh, this can be the start of the curve of a market maker model, or this can happen mid curve. I think I have examples of both. This is very high probability as it puts a very specific time element to the trade. Uh, time, time over price, right? As ICT always says, it's not price over time. Um, now that we're using the concepts of power of three on a high time frame candle, we can use standard deviation. Power of three has limited energy and standard deviation helps us measure that potential limit. Here are some examples. I'll show you some of these first, and then this that just happened, the chart, the chart that I have pulled up from what just happened today. So on this one, um, I didn't draw out SMT, but SMT is needed always. Because what we have is right in here. I mean, look at how messy this is, first of all. So this is a heck of a day. But right in here is the 10-hour candle open. And basically right away price moved away from opening price to the downside. It took out 
sell side liquidity. Oh, here, I have a big line. There was a high time frame order block right here that it tapped into it. So it, it manipulated into something, took liquidity along the way. Those are important things. That's how you know that that is your manipulation. And this is a very gnarly sell side of a market maker buy model. So then you look for your checklist of signs for reversal confirmations. There's SMT around here somewhere. There's a market structure shift or uh, some kind of change of state of delivery. Uh, again, I have videos on, on all of that prior to this one. And then you just look for entry. Uh, I don't remember if I entered here or not. I didn't have, uh, it was if it was on eval or something, it's not going to have executions, but whatever. Here's one of your opportunities to enter and really about the only one you could have entered up near the 10 a.m. open as well in this fair value gap or whatever, whatever your entry criteria is. And you know that I didn't have um, standard deviations here either. This was very early in my learning. Um, I don't even know what day this is, but the screenshot was taken over a month ago and I've come a really long way in the last month. So um, I'm not sure how far this went. There's equal highs here, but you would have drawn your standard deviation to figure out where probably in this case, two to 2.5 ends up being somewhere near all of this buy side. It's again, choppy and nasty anyways, but that's one example. The next one here is more of not the start of the market maker model, but um, kind of in the middle of it, um, which can happen. So we had come down from 830, probably news. Um, I didn't draw out everything that I need to, so I'll show you some better examples in a minute. Uh, but 10 a.m. opens here and immediately shoots higher. So for one, we are going to need a lower wick. So either price is going to come Either this is the manipulation and price is going to come back to open and generate a lower wick through distribution, or it's going to come back, provide manipulation, and then trade away. How do you know which, which one? How do you know that it's not just going to come back to open and keep going? We've got enough movement up right here that... That's a wick. That's a, a enough of a wick, right? What is over here? What's a high time frame PD array that's over here? Nothing. It took out, uh, you know, some relative equal highs, but there's nothing over here that is obvious. There's not even a large imbalance. There's nothing that stands out to me like, okay, that was manipulation, you know? Um, even... And I'll relay this comment. The wicks made it obvious. There's not even an obvious rejection wick of any kind. And everybody says wicks do the damage. Bodies tell the story. I will tell you the wicks tell a pretty uh, a pretty good story. So I think the wicks tell you more than the bodies do. The bodies definitely, or the wicks definitely do the damage. But man, they also tell you some things like this. Um, to me, it's coming back and creating these lower wicks here. And that's pretty obvious it's rejecting. It's pretty obvious it grabbed that liquidity and it's telling us a story that this is manipulation. So then you look for your second stage distribution, which shoots right up to buy side. Um, we're, I didn't draw standard deviations here. Like I mentioned, this was early on. Uh, actually the, I did just take this the other day. <laughs> we could probably go find this one in price action and figure that out. But I bet this is right near one to 1 1.5. And we did a little bit of retracement as is expected in the, uh, market maker framework. And then off we go. So those are the two examples I had there. Let's look at the example today, because I actually have everything drawn out the way that it's supposed to be. So this is 2 p.m. 2 p.m. opens right here. We do move up a little bit. How do you know that's not the ma manipulation? There's no high time frame anything up here. There's no obvious anything up here. Here's my 15 minute chart. In fact, we'll go look at it. Here's the two o'clock. Two o'clock open. Nothing. It's just a couple of candles hanging out. Okay. So now we wait when the two o'clock 
when the four hour candle opens. Sometimes it does manipulate very quickly, like that last example at the 10 a.m. open, wicked down a couple of times within 10 minutes of opening and then took off for the rest of the four hour candle. This one, um, it didn't manipulate into anything. So now we wait for it to do so. Either it's going to manipulate back up into this BPR. Can you even see that BPR on the 15 minute right here? So either it's going to manipulate back up into there and take off down to take some sell side, or it's going to take some sell side and go up, go up. Um, either the sell side new day opening gap or this buy side BPR would be high time frame areas you'd want price to go to before considering a reversal. In this case, it went down into this new day opening gap. It took sell side from this morning, 930. And we just now we follow the rest of the market maker. Uh, what's it called framework. So we come down into a high time frame PD array, we consolidate a little bit enough to form SMT. When SMT is formed, we wait for a market structure shift or change of state of delivery of some kind, which we get here. We get a nice impulse candle through that high market structure shift. Fantastic. Now we can draw standard deviations. In this case, how do you draw the standard deviations? What makes the most sense? Well, you always, you always want to draw maybe a couple of times. Sometimes it's really obvious. Sometimes it's not like this was, I mean, let's get really technical. That was the last manipulation move down two candles. Boom. Whoops. Before taking off. Okay. Does this standard deviation make sense lining up with anything on the left here? 2.2 to 2.5 maybe lines up with this new week opening gap. Uh, but otherwise, no, doesn't really line up with anything. Okay, let's say, I don't know, we used, after the SMT was made, we had a little bit of distribution like here, two candles. What if we did that leg? Well, there is a fair value gap in this silver bullet zone that could cause a retracement, maybe. There isn't anything that falls in the two to 2.5 zone to be a good target for liquidity. And there isn't anything near four that would make a good target for liquidity either. So I don't like that. So now let's try. Okay. So we had this manipulation. If we count this whole little leg, let's take a look at that. We do have a new week opening gap inside the silver bullet zone. We have a high very small internal little high and whatever, you know, kind of stuff over here next to the two to 2.5. And then buy side's really close to negative four. So this could work. This could get you some logic. Um, this wasn't my favorite one. Uh, but if we did run with this, I should do a whole video on standard deviations now that I think about it. Maybe I'll do that at the end. But we come up, we do kind of consolidate and retrace in the silver bullet zone. We do take, you can see we took some liquidity and rejected in this zone. And we traded up into the PD array at negative four, which is a BPR. So it did work out. What I liked was the first distribution. Nope. What I liked was the first, very first distribution leg. Okay. Still, the new week opening gap and the and the consolidation retracement fell within the silver bullet zone. Uh, yep, we took liquidity at right here at these highs within this little fair value gap. All of this kind of going on right here within this zone. We had three nice wicks on it. You can tell liquidity was grabbed there, and the BPR closer to the top still falls around negative four. So that's the one I utilized. And both of them are really close. So both of them do work. So you just kind of draw it out and then see how the first side of the curve lines up with these areas. And if there's logical things at each point, it's probably a good 
um, standard deviation drawing. So um, in that case, this is going to show you the limits then of power of three. So up by negative, either it's going to be negative two to negative 2.5 or up by negative four, your high of the four hour candle is going to be created. Either one of those. Uh, in this case, because this range is so small, it's probably not going to be here for four hours. It's probably going to be the higher one. You can get some bigger manipulation legs where 2.5 ends up being way up here or something like that, where it ends up being a further distance. And you can then determine, is there anything even worth going up to negative four for liquidity? Or will my end of the four hour candle be in the two to 2.5 zone? So that's that example from today. Hopefully that makes sense. We look at the two, we look at the four hour candle open. We find where it wants to manipulate to. It's nice um, when you see it form the start of a market maker model, because then you can watch for it go into a high time frame PD array and you just follow your normal checklist. And now you can use standard deviations to find where the high is probably going to be and where the end of your trade should be really your take profit. Um, hopefully you take partials along the way, obviously. Or it can fall within the middle of the middle of a of a move, and that's okay too. I wish I would have drawn standard deviations here, but I likely would have done this little wick high right here down to this lower wick here, that last manipulation, and right around here is going to be two to two point five. I can just tell you that right now. Um, so that's how you take a market maker model and apply it to a four hour power of three. I'm going to show you some discord examples because I might have more. I might have more in my journal so we can see that, right? Uh, let's make this smaller and bring it over here. So four hour power of three. This was, oh, this was this morning. So 10 a.m., 10 a.m. open, right here. We manipulated down back into the new day opening gap, created SMT. I drew my standard deviations from there. 2 to 2.5 brings me close to buy side. 1 to 1.5 is over in all of this junk, which is going to cause some retracements and consolidations. So I knew it was lining up pretty well. Didn't even look at uh, negative four because a nice major buy side was already at negative two and that was enough of a move for me. There was enough distance here to find an entry and catch a good move that I in fact did. Um, right here after the market structure shift, this big impulse, there's uh, I took an entry on this fair value gap that's right here and rode that up, got stopped out when it came back and then right, I don't know, like right here, I entered again, rode through some drawdown and brought this baby all the way up here and just took it up here somewhere because we were within the 2 to 2.5 zone. So again, same concepts. You wait for open right here. You wait for it to manipulate into something. This made sense. And now you can gauge how far it's going to go. And this is where we topped out. Um, and how to draw your standard deviations to know like where to enter, where things are going to happen and follow the framework. So that's pretty much all I got for applying this to a four hour power of three. I hope that I am achieving my goal and making this feel a little more simpler. Um, I do share a lot of examples, talk a lot about it in my discord. I do try to live stream on discord at least once a week. It is still pretty tough for me. Um, doing all of those things and being able to concentrate. So um, it doesn't happen a lot, but I am trying to do it more often. So if you're interested in talking about it, seeing more examples, asking me questions, whatever, link is in the description uh, for the Discord. And like I mentioned in the last video, this notion is going to be linked in the description once, what do I got? Two more videos. Once all four videos are 
out. I will go add it to the description of all four of them. So uh, that should be it. I appreciate you coming by, checking it out, and have a good day.